You're listening to MedScore Radio, bringing you the best in medicine. And here we are again, going live, talking about pathology. And if you don't know about these path bites, you can find them at www.pathologystudent.com. Today we're going to be talking about causes of neutropenia. When I hear neutropenia, the first thing I think is, uh uh-oh, something's wrong with the bone marrow. But that's just my own tendency to imagine the worst. There are actually a lot of other less frightening things and more common things that can make a person neutropenic. It's probably best to remember them in the context of two main categories, things that inhibit the production of neutrophils and things that remove neutrophils from the circulation. First, things that inhibit the production of neutrophils. Hematopoietic stem cell suppression, for example, aplastic anemia, infiltrative bone marrow diseases. Note, in these settings you'd see anemia and thrombocytopenia too, which are good diagnostic clues. Next, drug reaction. This is the most common cause of neutropenia. The list of drugs is long, so check out Robin's page 593. And ineffective hematopoiesis like that seen in megaloblastic anemia and myelodysplasia. Congenital disorders, which are very rare, like Kossman syndrome should be considered, in which patients have defects in genes involved in granulocyte differentiation. And lastly, things that remove neutrophils from the circulation. Immunologic processes like lupus or drug exposure. Splenomegaly, which is a big which in this case, the spleen sequesters neutrophils as well as red cells and platelets, and overwhelming infection. The patient is using up all the neutrophils by calling them out of the blood and into the tissues. So if you want to read more about this, please read Robin's 9th edition, page 582. Thanks very much.